So Rebecca and Gumpy have now got some help in the form of Shy, the refugee, who uh, has just turned up and has already been very useful. But as you'll see, I've gone back a teensy bit from the last video because what's about to happen is a raid. Yep. Damn those coyote men. There's no reasoning with them either. They're like proper pirates. They'll just you can't you can't have peace talks with them. You can't releasing their prisoners doesn't improve relations with them. They're just gonna keep attacking. But it's okay because it's just one guy with a knife. But one guy with a knife can be the end of your colony at this stage. So never relax. Never be calm. He's preparing for a while. I'm more interested in the ancient jet engine. It's it's depressing how incompetent I am at figuring out how to destroy those. Uh, it has happened um, in the future. I feel like I need to find the sort of language to describe the fact that because I'm ongoing playing and then coming back and doing the dubbing, how do I differentiate between now and the future? It's too hard. I can't. The point is, the raider is making his way round. He's coming along. I, I'm not entirely sure what Caroline's plan is. Um, past Caroline's plan. I presume she's uh, planning. Oh, 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 that's very bad. That's not what you want. You do not need your only two colonists to have a social fight just when you're about to get raided. As I say, one guy with a knife can take down an entire colony at this stage, no problem. Haha! <laughs> See, now that's quite cool. Because I've claimed that bit of junk, he's destroying it because he thinks it's important to me. So uh, while Rebecca and Gumpy sort out their issues... <laughs> oh no. We've had to make Shy come and rescue her. Oh no, this is just terrible. Shy Doctor? Ah, she's not bleeding to death, that's not too bad though. Um... Yeah, Shy can doctor. It's not the world's greatest doctor, but yeah, he can doctor. Oh, we better sort out his uh, work schedule altogether. I mean, even if someone's just staying with you for a bit, you should still make sure that their work schedule's as effective as possible. Yes, please, prioritise tending. Thank you. Marvellous. But let's not forget we're, forget we're being raided, guys. Nobody forget that there's still a guy with a knife down there. Coming for you. Have I forgotten? Is that what's happening? Oh, but well, you shouldn't forget because there's things... Oh! <laughs> okay, so what happened there is he tried to set fire to my grass, but ended up landing on the good old-fashioned spike trap. Spike traps are brilliant. So now everyone is free to leave the base. And what you really want to do in these situations, once you've checked nobody's bleeding, nobody's dying, is when everyone's this stressed, they kind of just need to be left on their own. The last thing you want to do is give them too many projects or too many things to do at this stage. Ah, it's nice. Somebody I saved from the transport crash there. Fully healed. Says, thanks for that. And leaves. No money. No food. No, hey, why don't I join your colony? None of that. Just, psh. Fine, be like that. See if I care. So, it's still a little crowded and uncomfortable in here. It'd be nice to have it a little bit tidier. It's getting there. But really, until we've got those bedrooms to shift people out, I don't really want to... I can't put things where they're going to be sleeping. I mean, although, at the moment, like, Gumpy's just sleeping in front of the doorway, so... It's not rust, it's Rimworld. 
and you know I can't be bothered to like edit so this madness shall be on the record forever but it is just peaceful watching them all sleep happy little pawns I know you're meant to call them pawns but I find colonists just a lot more the word pawn doesn't slip off the tongue easily and it sounds too much like pawn so colonists they will be up in the morning my soul washing at the uh, hand basin there and then just having a bit of a chat with Gumpy making him happier see Shy's doing some good work this is the kind of when you take in refugees in Rimworld you want to hope that they're all like Shy and not that they are in some way going to revolt and attack you just sitting there quietly mining away very slowly he's obviously quite shit at mining but you know I'm finding the Yorkshire Terrier a very poor value. I mean, the thing is, is that these small animals that don't sort of produce food or fight or haul, they're meant to provide comfort and sort of basically occasionally one of your colonists will get a mood boost from having been nuzzled. I, I don't see it happening often enough, frankly. It's just sort of all that thing's doing is eating my food. It's kind of hard this when like everybody in the colony is ill, needs fixing, needs fixing, healing, and like you need to mine, and the guy's mining's going really slowly. It's a uh... yes, you're right, past Carolina. It is a good time to fix your schedule. I think what the way you want to do your schedule varies as well what stage you're at in the game I think early game it is very much a different way to how I run it late the game though I have noticed that it's paused but luckily I've edited out the uh, 15 minutes that I wandered off to god knows what to do Still not quite overcome the technical difficulties that mean that when I'm looking at this and pre-recording it, I am looking at very, very blurry text there. Like the warnings down the side, obviously. I'm so familiar with them that I can figure out that probably says Hunter lacks ranged weapon, but it took me all of that time I was babbling, because I was buying time basically to figure out what it said. So we've got Hunter lacks ranged weapon, minor break risk. No idea what it says underneath that. Or that. Or that. So yeah, reading the real-time clock, which is on there as well, is not going to happen. But, you know, if you want to see where the edits are, if like you're that kind of eagle-eyed person, then, you know, feel free to uh, take a good look at that real-time clock there. Okay, so we still got a really boring bit going on here but you know this is what RimWorld's about sometimes just putting it on three looking at your phone while people heal sort themselves all out you know and Rebecca's getting in there a bit she's getting up and down occasionally from her healing period the fact that her and Gumpy had a social fight that's caused this it's like it's not even from some sort of heroic protection of the colony it's the fact that Gumpy decided to start a fight with Rebecca I mean what was he thinking Rebecca is the queen but equally you know I feel like a professional game streamer wouldn't be making you watch shy pick every single little rock out of the wall but when you're playing RimWorld like these moments where it's all quiet and nothing's going wrong are so rare 
and so like you just you can't ever sort of just go oh it's okay it's all quiet nothing's happening everything's fine because as soon as you do the horn of hubris will usually sound ah that's nice fully healed and uh oh they left again didn't they oh hello what have we got going on here now It's well, hang on, I'm not sure what is going on here. Oh, it's the wild man. So there's a wild man wandering around. I'd set him to be tamed, shy, helpfully he was trying to tame him, but he's taken revenge. Oh and now oh this isn't going well. Now now we've got a fight going on. Shy and the wild man are I mean, I don't know who I fancy in these chances. It's not like I've sent Shy out there particularly well armed. Never let your refugees be well armed because they'll just use it against you if they turn. Shit! Okay, <laughs> that's not good. I mean, he wasn't a permanent member of my colony. But yeah, I'd still rather that he didn't die. Hopefully Gumpy will save him. I'm guessing that's not taming the wildman either. Wildman. Goodbye, wildman. Ah, oh, yes. Let's let's maybe mark him not for taming. Oh, of course. Now the coyote men are back. <gasps> Shit. Where's Gumpy right now? Okay. So the raid's coming from the opposite side. Gumpy's on his way to rescue Shy. Rebecca's still lying unconscious in the bed. The Yorkshire Terrier's no fucking. Oh, Shy, you got up! Oh, Shy, you got up and walked up. I love it when people get up, although sometimes they do just collapse, which isn't great either. All right, everybody indoors! Quick! Safely indoors. Let's say it's rare you can go more than a few minutes without a crisis in RimWorld. Where are you? Where are you going, Shy? Where are you going? Shouldn't you be? Oh, that's not Shy. That's the Wildman. Wildman. Are they major break risks starting their assault? Yeah, probably make sure. Nobody's about to bleed out first. Oh, bless him, he was going to start mining again for me. You don't need to do that. Rebecca will tend your wounds. Oh, here comes... What? Is that the raider? Or is that... No, that's just still the injured wild man. Now the coyote man. Yeah, okay, got you. Oh. It's a bit harsh taking it out on the wild man. I hate they do this. It's like, yeah, fine. Obviously, attacking my fridge is the thing that's gonna. Rebecca, get him down. Take him down, Rebecca. No, you missed. Try again. No, you you missed again there. Unfortunately. Oh no, this is not going well at all. Maybe there will be no future videos. And frankly, I can't tell how the colony survived at this stage. Ah! Oh jeez, Rick. This is bad! <laughs> so, so what, what's the plan now? Get you to get, so like get Gumpy to fight the guy while Shy comes out. Oh, okay, he's down. Phew, good. Get Rebecca rescued, <laughs> and we're back to everybody being injured and unable to do anything. Which obviously does slow progress down a wee bit. I 
Oh shit, is everybody stoned on smoke leaf as well? Does that actually. I can't imagine that helps with the doctoring, but it might help with the mood. Alright, I finally found the setting so I can actually read what's going on now. Mwahahaha! <laughs> Shelter for an ally! Quest available! See, I can read now. A jump pack? What do we have to do to get the jump pack? Host somebody for 21 days? Oh, come on, there's no way I'm going to turn that down. Why am I looking at the bionic arm and the bionic leg? Yeah, get the jump pack and the assault rifle. Boom! The ke Hulk keeping somebody for 21 days is, like, it's fine, right? It's, you know, they don't do anything, they eat your food. If they, and The ones you want to watch out for are the quests where it says they will expect to be kept um, in a high standard because then you have to keep their mood high for the whole time. But the rest of them, just make sure they don't die and you're fine. Um, which is generally a good idea. You can the one thing you can do is you can set the area they remain in. I'm a bit disappointed I haven't done that yet, but what you should do is make sure they just stay in your your home area or maybe your safe area, depending on what kind of areas you have to find. Oh, this is so much better now. I can actually read and see what's happening, you see. Ah uh, yes. First dead raider needs burying. I don't get overboard with um Basically, as soon as I can get a crematorium on the go, I like to do that. I know some people, um, I won't be naming any names, but some people like to keep all the corpses of the people that they that raid them and use them to feed animals like lions and um, panthers and bears and stuff like that. I find it quite weird keeping a big corpse room, frankly. I find it weird that they've decided to have a party out the back here, which is a weird place to have a party, but there you go. I think everyone needed a party. The mood was a little bit low. Nicely Davenport bought Davenport brought a bit of his own food with him as well. So yeah, you can't do a lot to their schedule, but you can tell them to patient and bed rest. Also, if you've got any mods on that are adding something to your um, work schedule, then you can usually make guests do them, which I kind of like that. It's fun. It's like because basically it's like skip through, so therefore I can make him entertain if I, because of the hospitality mod. I can make him study and teach because of the children mod. Not that I use the studying and teaching bit of the children mod, but you know what I mean. So. We need colonist beds, we need a ranged weapon, we need batteries, we need a moralist. Tattered apparel is never going to be off your screen. Like, just deal with it. I mean, I'm not saying I don't try and fix it. I do. I will uh, later game, you will see the fact that I try and fix it. But I think it's just part of RimWorld, especially is like if you like tidying things up, I like to try and clear every single warning down there on the right. And... Tattered apparel is just something you've got to live with. The fact that it says one colonist idol worries me, but then you remember, oh, it's just Davenport. It's just this guest Davenport who wants to slum it. He's basically living the song Common People. He wants to live like common people. He wants to see whatever common people see. I'm not going to do the whole song. I considered it, but I'd already made a mistake. You know, and while I was a member of the Pulp Fan Club in 1996, times have changed. And frankly, that song drives me nuts now. I mean, it must be worse if you're in Pulp, I suppose you probably have to listen to it a lot more. But... Rover the Yorkshire Terrier. What are you bringing to life, Rover? What are you actually doing to help? I mean, Shy, he's in a worse state than any of you. But he's, uh, he's working hard. I kind of like this new thing, like, you can see bandages all over them when they've been bandaged up, so they've got little white marks all over them. It's interesting. So, yeah, the purpose of making sure there's a grave to bury the corpse in at this early stage is, is the quickest most efficient way of hiding corpses because people don't like seeing corpses people really i mean you know 
IRL either, but in the game um, it tends to be quite a big mood debuff that frankly I can live without my people having because I don't need them having breakdowns and all that malarkey at the moment. They already are, they're like basically non-functioning, so let's not make it any worse. At least at the moment they're just lying in beds and not burning the whole building down. Now it seems to me that what I failed to notice is that there is another corpse just above the rice field there, um, next to the smoke leaf joints. And so they're still going to be getting the debuff there. You know, clearly at the time I was like, ah, oh, that's it, that's fine. I've buried that corpse, sorted. Also, people like having graves to go and visit as a sort of like spiritual thing. It's weird, I know. I mean, you think I'd have noticed the courts now, but I think we can all agree that past Caroline's walked away from the computer and left it running and is not noticing anything that's going on, because there's no mouse cursor movement going. Oh! Ah, there she goes. Yes, Vlad the pirate needs burying as well. I do usually put my uh, graveyards a little bit further away because you it, it's not something that's ever going to be you can't build over them and in theory all right you could dig up the corpses and then get, can you then get rid of the but anyway basically it's not something that's easy it's easier to put them far away and not have to worry about them too much yes that is a dig at past me as well It's a bleak time for the colony. But they're starting to get things together. I mean, you know, look, look at Gumpy there. He's, he's getting the food from outside. I mean, all that rice that's grown out. Is that rice? Or is it whatever it is? It is rice, though. Anyway, all of that's grown and it's just not getting harvested. There you go. Good boy, Gumpy. I mean, he's botching a lot of them, but he's getting better. The more they do, the more they learn. But as you can see, the power supply is not that stable from just a wind turbine. It's trouble with wind turbines. Like, when they work, they're great, but they don't. And if you haven't got the batteries to store um, the power, then it's like, but, you know, Rebecca's not really in a state for researching right now, so we're not researching batteries. Nobody's in the state for building, so we're not building anything. Davenport's just wandering around. He probably could be really helpful if he wasn't just here as some bloody tourist. Try to see how people live. Living a life on the edge. Bastard. Why have I paused it? What are you looking for? What are you trying to figure out? Yeah, if in doubt, like, let's solve those problems. So first of all, who's, you know, Hunter lacks ranged weapon. Can't do anything about that. Haven't got any more ranged weapons. I mean, you could make a bow. Put a crafting spot down, you can make a bow. Go on, put a crafting spot down. No? What are you trying to solve? Ah, you want the mining, so yes, get shy, just mining. Because we need to get that, get cooking top priority because we've got lots of food there. Yeah, okay. But if you want Shy doing the mining, why are you taking him off that? You're not going to give him a lit ranged weapon, so that might as well take him off hunting. Never arm your refugees. There's nothing worse than having them turn on you and use your own weapons against you. I speak from experience. But the problem is because my power's intermittent, it's not, the, the cooker's not always on. So somebody goes to cook and then goes, oh, well, there's no power to the cooker. So I couldn't actually cook, you know. I mean, I'd, I'd have loved to have been cooking, but I just, I couldn't. 
Oh, that's right. Phew. Chunks of spacecraft have impacted nearby. Yeah, those are quite useful because um, they get components from them. But right now, components, not my big problem. Like, I am not sitting here going, oh no, how will I make another uranium slug turret at this stage? I mean, I've got all that steel sitting in the walls there, which obviously will be lovely to mine at some point, but no point doing it right now. Might as well just leave it protecting me, keeping me safe. Ah, lovely safe steel. But it's like going against my instincts. My instincts being, mine the steel! But right now all I just need is some bedrooms so that I can get everybody out of the main production room because like that is valuable wall space that they're all taking up sleeping against there right now that I want to put in more production stuff and also they'll probably be a lot happier and more productive if they have somewhere to recuperate I mean I'm not planning on making like you know everybody's going to get a beautiful perfect bedroom but as you can see there, I'm trying to put down a um, stone cutter's bench because I'm going to want stone. I'm going to want stone to put in walls. I'm going to want stone to put in doors. Wood just doesn't cut it. It's a little bit too flammable for my liking, frankly. Um, so we need that in there. And then it's great if you get somebody a bit. It's another transport pod crash. Gee, that's like three in the space of an hour. Ah, oh, sweet, you can send guests to rescue. Well, that's Davenport's bio. Davenport, no, actually would not be any use whatsoever. Um, there's no reason. I don't think I realised I was looking at Davenport's bio there. Yeah, slowly Caroline figuring this out. Like, what? Oh, you're not checking? <sighs> I mean, you know, in fairness to past me, past me will have had more things going on around her, but. Hakuja! Another person to rescue, feed, and then watch them walk off again, <laughs> presumably. Alright, everyone seems to be in better moods now. Hunting is happening. That is very good. Yeah, let's not bother mining down there. We just need the bedrooms. So, I don't know if I talked about this last video. I don't think I did as much. But is basically, there is a mod called Colony Manager. And they haven't updated it for 1.3 yet. And I miss it so much because what colony manager does is you can set someone to go to a managing desk and they can mark what needs to be hunted wildlife wise oh it's just an eclipse that's all right and without that you basically at least half your time in rimworld has to be spent opening the wildlife tab and telling people to go and hunt things and frankly who has time for that Oh, somebody needs to empty the latrine. Nice to see Gumpy washing his hands before he starts cooking that. Totally appropriate. Yorkshire Terrier Rover still doing absolutely sod all. Where's the nuzzling? Where's the comfort? With the forming a bond. And yes, silly little coat on as well. I don't know, sorry, I've, I've, this, this wasn't meant to turn into a hate rant against Rover. But you know, I had the hate rant against Gumpy last year, on, so. Ah, oh, and everyone's asleep. And all's right with the world. Like that, like those mood bars up there. I erroneously stated in my previous video that the mood bars were colour coded now as part of what the 1.3 update. Turns out I just had a mod on that I hadn't noticed I had on 
that was doing it, turned it off, and yeah, it turns out, oh, I needed the colour-coded mood bars. And unfortunately, by the time I realised that, I'd unsubscribed from the one I had, so then I had to change what colour-coded mood bar mod, which is not an easy thing to say quickly, which one of those mods I had on, and I have now put the best right one on, because it's so much easier, and I tried a little bit without it, but I didn't like it. So that quest that I've just dismissed there without looking um, was the Ship to the Stars quest, and that has been in since the very start of RimWorld, um, and it is that some AI tells you that somewhere on the planet there is a ship that could help your colony leave this world, get back to their own world, go off planet. And that is one end game option for you with this. You can have a lot of end game goals now, didn't used to be able to, but now there are multiple end game goals. And one obviously is building your own ship off the planet, another is getting to a far off ship, another is, or actually is the ship to the stars one, sorry I may, again I might be talking shit at you, which is that there is the royalty update which allows you to, if you become an important enough royal, then they'll give you a space on their ship to the stars. That's probably what it was actually. Ah, oh, nice to see the farming going on. Yeah, it's well worth choosing a spot that has like all year round growing potential. Wow, I'm wondering if I'm going to manage to like see any progress on the base in this hour. It seems sensible to break up the videos into hours, but like, hmm. <laughs> Will there be any progress on the base? I mean, we're half an hour in. Essentially, I was about to say all we've done is put everyone in a good mood, but look at those colour-coded mood bars. Morale is low. Yep. Morale is so low. Gumpy has now gone on an insulting spree. It's not good. It's not what we want to see. Insulting sprees are in some way the worst because they take their bad mood out on somebody else. That person then gets into lower morale themselves. They then go on an insulting spree. You get into a vicious cycle. And what you want to do, as I've finally done here, is check needs when people are not oh he did get nuzzled by the yorkshire terrier all right my bad that was rover was being you know useless that's one of the few positives in gumpy's life actually the small comfort <laughs> from a yorkshire terrier but he did still start a social fight with rebecca and frankly i'm really sick of that but yeah the needs tab is where you can really figure out what's going wrong in your colony you should be looking at the needs tab regularly to go, okay, what is making my colonists unhappy? And with the ideologians, so it's meant it's it's the word religion, but they've taken rule off it and put IDO at the beginning of it. So it's now like ideologion. Ideologion. I'm going with ideologion. Okay, anyway, the ideologions DLC is um adds all sorts of other things that can give them buffs, like their needs can be met and give them really happy things, but also can give them really negative things. Um, and like, you're probably gonna have to skip ahead to like video five or something like that to sort of see that in massive action, but it's coming, trust me. Right now, what you're watching is crisis management in RimWorld, how to limp on <laughs> with two colonists, a refugee and a visitor, and a Yorkshire Terrier. Because that's the thing, is like, although there's four people there right now, there is only two people who are staying. Davenport's gonna go home back to his castle and report on what life was like in this terribly tragic world. And I walk, you know, they had a fecal sludge patch outside, it was terrible. Um, Shy is gonna, once he's got himself recovered 
I mean, I, I suppose that's the thing is like Shy's just looking for somewhere to hide out for a bit. And so once he's done that, he's going to return to his own family, his own life. He's got people. He's got people who want to see him again. He's not here permanently. And what will happen to Rebecca and Gumpy then? Like, they're still united in their grief for their lost colonist, Kina, who was um, tragically, tragically killed uh, in a completely non preventable situation. Um. <laughs> They really, they could do with somebody else. Oh yeah, and we've got, there's actually five people that I keep forgetting, because cool, there's the, the transport pod crash victim, there's always a transport pod crash victim here. So five people, only two of them are permanent. The food is going to be good. That's the pain in the ass thing about having people who are staying but not working because they are eating your food. And food in RimWorld is always what the game's essentially about. It's like anything beyond making sure you've got plenty of food is just, you know, fun. Medicine's low. Maybe. Maybe, Gumpy, if you didn't stop. Oh no, Shy's off. Bye, Shy. Sad. Quest available, Heat Wave. Filthy of us. So you get a lot of these quests, um, particularly early game, which is where some mad scientist, some rich mad scientist, wants to experiment um, with their weather controlling device. Yes, it does sound like an episode of The Simpsons. And um, so. I know Shy was a she. I apologise for misgendering Shy, by the way. Um, but anyway, yeah, the heat wave. It'll be. I'll get some nice reward for it. What's the options? That, that quest completing the refugee. Skill trainer. I mean, that's all right. Prestige recon helmets. Nice. Glitter world medicine. How much of it? Nine. Okay. Yeah, and at this stage, I don't need the other stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that past Caroline's gonna accept it for. Prestige Recon Helmet and Glitter World Medicine to put up with baking heat for five days. I mean, there is the problem that I have no cooling system set up whatsoever. I haven't even got a passive cooler. Passive coolers are a lot more effective than you'd think, actually. You just have to keep them restocked with wood, but... Nah, you don't want it for that. What are you going to do with that? Oh, who's got plague? <laughs> well, I say who's got plague. It's an animal plague. And there's only one animal with There's no no there was no end to that sentence that made sense. There's only one animal in the colony. Now there's a mad alpaca. Jesus, right, so everybody inside. Hopefully the mad alpaca will wander onto the spikes, and then everyone will get to have alpaca for dinner. Mm. So I think she decided against the heat wave in exchange for Glitter World Medicine, which is a bold choice considering that it's low medicine and it's early game. And Glitter World Medicine is like the best medicine. But it would be a waste just using it on the Gumpy and Rebecca's social fights, I suppose. Haha! <laughs> Colonists won, alpaca nil. Rebecca washing her hands and presumably going off to hunt yep, to hunt some animals. You can hear the shooting in the distance. Need recreation variety. I think somebody destroyed or one of the fires or one of the raids destroyed my um what do you call it? The thing that you throw the hoops at. They love it, they go mad for it in Rimworld. Well, we'll get them something new soon. I'm sure. It's the uh, checking that they're unrestricted. Like the number of times after a raid and I'm like, why is nothing getting done? Why is nothing getting collected? It's because you've still got them set to stay indoors, Caroline. Um, 
And they've got the little blue symbols for the ideology in there. Their belief of freedom. Rebecca Gumpian. Davenport. But Davenport's just visiting. Sides. Just Rebecca and Gumpy. It's a bit sad when you don't have all your original three colonists, but I have to say it's pretty rare that my original three make it through. Usually two. But just, you know, those early days of setting up a colony in the rim world, it's dangerous. It's difficult. Look at that. Another, another person abandoning me. Patched them up. Saved them from their crash transport pod. And how do they repay me? By leaving. I mean, to be fair, there's no bedrooms and everybody's sleeping on the floor in a giant room of crap at the moment, so fair play. But, you know, still, it could be so much better if you just stayed. Ah, but yeah, that's always nice, the fact that relations with somewhere will get better if you patch up one of their people and they leave them. It's actually sometimes quite useful when, like, if traders are around on the map, if they get shot at or something, or they get into a fight with an animal, I mean... Um, and then you are the one who patches them up and sends them off, then they get you get a nice little boost in relations because they exited the map healthy. Woohoo! So, what are we doing now, Caroline? Ah, yes, replacing the horseshoes pin. That's what it's called, finally. I feel like most of the time your Rimworld colonists are going to be very happy for a long time with just a horseshoe pin. They don't need anything else in life. I mean, frankly, who does? I love a horseshoe pin. So here's a classic I'd wandered off. I cut it for you because you didn't need to watch that wind turbine going around for ages. And, uh... So you join us back. Nothing's happened. Caroline's walked away from the computer. Past Caroline, that is. This is current Karen. Caroline commentating for you. And, uh, as you can see, you know, things are largely going okay. I mean, the wildman locust is eating a lot of my crops, but, you know, that's to be expected. Sun's just coming up on a new day and... Oh, look! My Yorkshire Terrier has died, and obviously I was looking at my phone because my Caroline, my Caroline, past Caroline's just gone, what? <sniffs> yep. And bonded animals dying is never good for the mood of the person that they were bonded to. But, at least we don't have an annoying little Yorkshire Terrier yapping around anymore. And hey, who fancies meat for dinner? <laughs> I don't know why I hated that Yorkshire Terrier so but I just feel like other people when they start off their random animal always seems to be so much cooler and here's me with the bloody Yorkshire Terrier again. Yes. Oh, look at Gumpy. Cooking away. Oh, you see, and he's like, oh, I can't cook anymore because the power's gone fritzed because the bloody wind's died down. We haven't got any batteries yet. Rebecca, get on researching. We need a battery. Cooking and research, cooking and research. Yep, not getting enough power. And there's nothing blocking it. Veg patches don't block it, which is great. They, in fact, stop the trees growing. But just one wind turbine, not enough. You'd think a one wind turbine, it's quite a quite sizable wind turbine, would be enough to power a fridge and an oven. But the dangers of wind power. Not always there when you want it. It dies down. And the dangers of people leaving food in the bloody entrance to the fridge. Yes, move that fast, thank you. Enough problems without power without you leaving the fridge door open with a pile of bloody meat inside it. Bless Gumpy. You can never have too much food, right? There's going to be points in RimWorld where you're like, oh, I'm fine. I mean, right now, right, I've got three colonists and 77 meals, which is like, what, a month's worth of food. So you're like, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Trust me, that can go in an instant. 
I mean, first of all, if your fridge fails, oh, I almost wonder if, like, maybe one day I should do two separate fridges. So if something goes wrong, in, but no, that's more like, like, if something goes wrong, it's usually a whole base-wide power outage, like a solar flare. So actually, it would be rubbish. It would destroy the other fridge. So yeah, okay, scratch that idea. There is the mod, which I rarely use, called Rim Fridge. And the thing is, is like I like I feel rim fridges are a little bit cheesy, so I don't like to use it all the time. But there are certain circumstances where you've built a very specific type of room, or a very specific set of things. So, like for example, a prisoner room. If you want to make sure there's a specific supply of food for a prisoner, but you don't want other people going near the prisoner or stuff like that, you can put the fridge in there. You know, so sometimes when you come up with a cunning plan it can be worth using Rim Fridge. So I usually have the mod on. Man Hunter Pack. Um, yes, I usually have the mod on, but I don't usually use it. Right, Man Hunting Pack of what? Cats! Oh no, Man Hunting Cats. Get indoors. Don't have any robots. Robots is also a mod, obviously. But it's a mod that I think is really cool and I think should be in the main game. So I don't think it's OP at all because it's bloody expensive to get your hands on robots. So I'm happy with it. But anyway, right now we have two manhunting cats to deal with. Dun -dun 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 Here they come. You don't need me to do sound effects. The Rimworld sound effects are actually quite good themselves, but... In fact, they sound very much like the sound effects used in the classic 80s um, BBC Halloween special, Ghost Watch. And that's kind of spooking me out actually now, because I'm on my own in the house and I can hear it. And it's like the noises from Pipes' room. Quick, kill the cats! They're scaring me! Yeah, put it on three. Hey, there we go. Basically... Oh no, it sounds so much like... There you go. In this situation, you're essentially just waiting for them to walk into your wooden spikes. Then you can unrestrict people. It is worth any of them that are downed, like that one up there, clicking on it and saying, finish off. And I can't remember if you have that option in the vanilla game, or if that's one of my mods gives me that finish off option. I think it might be um, mint menus that does that or something like that, because... Otherwise, they do have a tendency to get up again. Not always, but sometimes, especially um, insects later in the game, they can sometimes quite often get up. You're like, oh, it's fine, they're all dead. I mean, you'll see nobody in my group right now has thought to finish off the cat. And I haven't thought to tell... Actually, I'm probably just going, who's not doing that? Yes. Come on. Oh, it's alright, the cat's dead. By the time you figure it out, Caroline, the cat's dead. God. Low medicine, need batteries. Rebecca, research faster! Come on! Got the cool new research animation going. But still no batteries yet. We're not far off now. You can always tell how far you are through your research on the little research tab down the bottom. You can see it's nearly filled up. But apparently Rebecca has to sleep. Ah, uh, yeah, this is me still thinking about assigning a role. It's too early, Caroline. We don't know enough about ideologions yet. Ideo Religion, ideology. Make those two words one. Ideologion is what I'm sticking with. I'm going to stick with that pronunciation. Ooh. Somebody will join me. Um, but I'll get attacked by one trooper. Oh, and I'd have to fight against the Empire of Perfection. So you usually get one of these missions early on where you get to decide whether you want to be on the side of or against the Empire, the royalty. And I decided that, because I haven't really ever played royalty through properly. I played royalty, but I just don't, I usually fuck around with it at the edges. I don't normally go full in and I decided that I'm going to do this one properly full in royalty full in ideology all the way to the end you're going to get some end game of this <laughs> like anyone's going to make it through all of this um, 
but so yeah i've rejected that mission even though i could have got another person on the basis of i don't want to be an enemy of the empire you can be an enemy of the empire you can still get psi powers and stuff by doing that but i find it's a little easier being in the empire and i wanted to build a throne room batteries we finally have batteries marvelous i mean batteries are not like the end of but oh, research tree early doors my strategy get batteries and then i try and stick to what do i need like right now what do i need i don't necessarily you'll you'll see i don't necessarily use the tech t tech t tech tree in a logical manner um also it's sometimes worth pausing while you're searching the tech tree because otherwise you'll be there for a while but yeah smithing's a pretty solid early doors one because you know you do need it but i'm not rushing I would, there's other more valuable things rebecca could be doing so i've taken her off researching she could be hunting she could be cutting plants we're not going to have davenport forever you know battery yeah i think i said before i tend to only have one battery and i usually use it as basically an indicator it's like if all my power situations are fine my battery's full if my power situation's not fine then my battery will be going down or empty oh rebecca don't have a corpse upset corpse obsessions are really annoying and it's another reason that the um crematorium thing is actually much better because if you've burnt all your corpses nobody can go and dig them up but yes at least we haven't got a dining table yet noticed that rimworld colonists do tend to put corpses on the dining table when they have corpse obsession which yeah, nobody wants that nobody wants a skeleton at breakfast except maybe doctors medical students and necromancers so they can raise the dead but i mean even a necromancer he's like i haven't had my breakfast yet i haven't had any coffee i haven't had any tea i'm not going to start raising the dead need at least a full english breakfast before you can start doing that So, Rebecca, corpse obsession, wandering around mad, but still got time to eat food and vomit. Oh, she got food poisoning as well. Oh, let me vomit everywhere. That wild man's still wandering around. Extreme break risk. Well, at least the corpse obsession is over. But really, we could do with something to cheer Rebecca up at this point. Is that what you're doing, past Caroline? No. No, you're just going to make sure that that corpse gets uh, buried again. Very ineffectually, though. See, we can see the battery now. No. Oh, it's another transport pocket. I mean, seriously, I feel like this is a world record number of transport crashes. Hadley. Let him 14 hours. Plenty of time to get him. Off you go, Gumpy. Oh, he needs a prisoner bed. Oh, for Pete's sake. So if they're not from a friendly faction, you can't just put them on one of your med beds. You need to put them in a prisoner bed. And weirdly, sometimes you need your prisoner room sooner than you need your um, colonist bedrooms because actually taking prisoners is one of the most effective ways of getting more people in your colony. And so, but it has to be behind a locked door. So what past Caroline is really ineffectually trying to do right now is figure out A, how to make that a prisoner bed because she's completely gone like, what? Oh, that's because the new, the new meta, no, the new thing, it's not the meta i know i understand what that means but the new thing is that the bed is set for colonists or for prisoners and i hadn't seen that button there or for slaves you see and uh, that delay there was me turning around to my partner and going how do you make a bed for prisoners have you made a bed for prisoners and he said yeah just click on the four colonists button so 
I'll answer that question. Now, obviously, I've lost Hadley. Can't find where that transport pod crash has gone. That's why it's always a good idea to not click away the envelope until you've done it. It was over the other side! Oh my god. Past Caroline. Your brain is clearly a little fuzzy. What time is it? 4.54 in the afternoon. Got the real world clock on there, so I, you know, highly doubt that I was drunk, so. I mean, it could have been the weekend. Hey, found him. Or her. I find it very hard to tell um, Rimworld porn genders instantly, so I apologise for anybody who get, gets misgendered. Good work, Gumpy. Get that prisoner in. Wall and the heat wave. So, prisoner. Just going to try and recruit him, are you? Not going to check his bio. Not going to think, hmm, is this a good idea? Or are you just going to pause there for ages? Ah, yes, you see, Will is definitely new. And I was confused about, this is the first time I had a prisoner, and I was confused about, like, is this the same as Resistance? Is this a state? Do we need to reduce this now? Is this a different thing to how we used to do it? So, yeah. A few new changes from before the uh, the 1.3 update. Sorry, it's not ideology that's put that in. It's the 1.3 update, I think. To be fair, I'm playing them at the same time, so... What do I know? Uh, you going to check that quest? Quest available. Quest available. Oh yeah, also, make sure somebody actually treats the prisoner. That's probably a good idea. There's not enough lights in this base. It's pretty dark. Generally, pawns do not like it in the dark. Yeah. Always like that's sort of when you haven't got when you haven't had any prisoners yet, just making sure somebody's wardening. It's well worth having people wardening on high because you don't always have pris what well, maybe you do. Maybe you play very differently to me, but you don't always have prisoners, and so it's really worth making sure that you've got that. So let's have a look at Hadley. He's an old holiest. Hmm. This is a new ideology on that I haven't seen before. He's a little bit more uh, conservative than I'd like. But we'll leave it there. Till next time.